Ed Sheeran. And please, will you welcome to the stage, Alex Healy! Hello, how are we doing? Great, uh, I'm Alex. Uh, I'm going to talk a bit about my ex-girlfriend. I'll tell you a little bit about us. She's five, five foot nine. We met at university. She was American. I was tolerant of that. And uh, <laughs> she ended up uh, breaking up with me over Skype, which is a fun, fun way to be broken up with over a video conferencing system. So the worst part of that was when I was sort of sitting in my computer chair, kind of rocking back and forth in the fetal position, thinking at least this can't get any worse. And then Skype popped up with a message saying, in order to improve the quality of our service, could you please rate that conversation out of five? So really good, three stars, really good audio and video. Couldn't blame them for the old content, could I? Um, uh, it's not a good breakup. Uh, not as bad as one of my friends, though, who was going out with a girl for about uh, two months. And then she turned to him and said, uh, look, I'm really sorry. I just uh, want things to go back to the way they were. And he was like, we weren't friends. We didn't even know each other. Exactly, that is <laughs> correct. He got that in one, got it in one. Um, actually, like a long distance breakup can be quite good because you can sort of blame it. You can blame it on the distance. You can be like, I'm, I'm brilliant. I'm fantastic. I probably, probably chased her away with all my brilliance. If anything, it's probably, I'm great. Uh, it's just the Atlantic Ocean. That's, I'm pretty good. Um, uh, but one of my friends was like, yeah, it could be the distance. Could also be that she found someone else. That is also possible, so he's a good friend. Uh, and um, be sort of dealing with that cliche, the worst thing that can happen in a breakup is there's someone else. And obviously it really sucks if you ask, is there someone else? And they're like, yeah, I'm really sorry. I just, uh, I met Tim at work. It was a really intense environment. One thing led to another, you know, I still always care about you, but I just love him now. Um, obviously that's terrible, but I think a worse answer to the question, is there someone else is no. I just prefer being alone to being with you. That is <laughs> overall preferable. Um, I mean, it's good. I, at least I don't have to live in America. Is my main thing. I had a friend who worked on the 2012 uh, Obama re-election campaign, and he, his job was to like answer phones and try and defend why people should vote for Obama. And someone called up and said, "I won't vote for Obama because Obama is a socialist." He's not. My friend was like, well, "He's not. He's not a socialist. In fact, he's very right-wing by almost any other country's standards." Um, but what's your problem with socialism? What's wrong with socialism? And the caller was like, "Well." Uh, socialism leads to fascism, which leads to communism. It's not. I mean, it's, inf it's sort of unfortunate because it's like they've heard of the political horseshoe dynamic where sort of socialism can lead to communism and then sort of jump to fascism, but she's on socialism, she leads to fascism, which leads to communism, which doesn't really. It's like another protective father saying they won't let their 17 year old daughter hold hands uh, because holding hands leads to blowjobs, which leads to kissing. It's not. They've, they've applied logic, but it's not, it's not correct logic, is it? It's no. No great shakes there. Um, yes, yeah, so that, uh, that breakup was about a, a year ago, and I haven't had much sex since then. Um, it's often sort of uh, referred to as like a dry patch, which I think is a very crude, sort of misogynistic phrase, horrible phrase, dry patch. I've been trying to find a different uh, way to describe it, maybe sort of um, make myself feel a bit better, maybe take a leaf out of like agriculture's book, and like I wasn't on a, a dry patch, but I was on like a fallow year. Like I was having so much sex in the years before, like I needed a year off sex, sort of rotate the crops, put some legumes in, you know, because once the topsoil's gone, it's gone, guys, am I right? The guys know, the girls don't get it, but the guys know once the topsoil's gone, you know, got to rotate the, put the phosphates and the nitrates in, guys, the guys know, the guys know, the guys know, the guys know. Um, so I've sort of uh, end up having different problems to, my, to some of my friends in that year. One of my friends was complaining that he felt, uh, he felt bad, uh, he felt guilty for having had a threesome, uh, which is a d dilemma I've had. Uh, uh, he didn't quite have a threesome. He had sex with two different women the same night, which I can't empathize with either, given that I've never had sex with two different women in the same financial quarter. That's not <laughs> happened. I had to get an accountant in to audit that joke, but no, that's, uh, that's... But he did explain to me how I could make him tax deductible, so that was fantastic. Um, I, it doesn't make sense. I don't earn anywhere near enough from comedy to be able to make that joke real. So that's for the accountant... Accountant, no accountant in the room. Okay, um, so in that time of singledom, I uh, sort of learned something about myself and being single, which I've sort of expressed uh, on this graph here, which is so that's the strength of feeling I feel. That's how excited I am at the possibility of dating a girl I like. But then this is um, uh, my fear of being a creep by accidentally hitting on someone who isn't interested. Uh, and I call that graph, uh, why will die alone? That's my, that's my why will die alone graph. Okay, so we've really buoyed the uh, atmosphere in the room up with the why will die alone graph. I'm not actually afraid of dying alone. I'm afraid of living alone. I think that sounds terrible, but I don't really give a, I don't really care who's there 
you know, so 30 or 4 years before the death that I care about, that, you know, I don't really mind who I check out with. That's sort of irrelevant at that point, I think. Okay, so I've really won you all over with that. Uh, I've... I've had a lot of time uh, to work on these graphs because I thought I was going to be doing a postgrad this year, but I didn't feel like I could afford it. And I've made a graph of how tuition fees have changed over time over the recent years. So they look something like that. So that's how that graph <laughs> looks. What a stupid thought there'd be some satire. It's just a stupid joke, isn't it? It's very stupid. Um, actually, you've made a graph about how not satirical my comedy is. So that's how satirical comedy is, and that's how long my set goes for. It starts being stupid, but then it sort of tails off, and it never reaches the, neat, the sort of necessary satire mark, and so I'm very uh, sorry about that. <laughs> stupid stuff, guys. Um, good. Uh, I, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, in this period of, of being single, I've sort of um, tried to, uh, like, alcohol, like, Dutch courage is supposedly the way of dealing with this, but it doesn't really work for me, not because I'm sort of, some sort of um, mega lad who uh, isn't affected by alcohol, but more the, I'm so repressed at the point where I've drunk enough to be able to tell someone I like that I like them is after the point that I've drunk so much that I'm unconscious. I've just sort of blacked out. I'm not, no chance of telling them that I like them because I am, oh, I am in bed. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so, and then you, you, even if you do that, you end up sort of, I, I, in the last, um, like, six months, I've managed to read about three different Saturday supplements telling me to, like, self-diagnose my own alcoholism, which is a good way to kick off any weekend. Um, and the question is always like, um, do you ever feel guilty about how much you drink? Do your friends ever tell you you drink too much? If you've said yes to these two questions, you're probably an alcoholic. Which I think is maybe sort of simplifying quite a complex diagnostic <laughs> procedure, isn't it? Also, it's sort of a self-filling prophecy, because it might be true that you're an alcoholic if you answer yes to those questions, but I think it's equally true if you answer no. Like, do you feel guilty about how much you drink? No, I'm an alcoholic. I, <laughs> Do your friends ever tell you you drink too much? No, I'm an alco they're alcohol. We're all alcoholics, really. Do, do join us. It's pretty fantastic. Um, so uh, putting alcohol to one side, I've sort of uh, instead decided to do something called Tinder. I don't know if anyone, does anyone here not know what Tinder is? Good, thank you for putting your hands up, everyone. I, I do, if you don't, you won't understand. I need to, I need to explain it, is what I'm saying. It's a, uh, an application for your phone, which is sort of a dating, it's a sex, sex app, more than a dating sex, dating sex app, um, that you sort of, it's, basically, it's very uh, sort of superficial. You just put about five pictures of yourself up, people kind of near you pop up on it, and then if you find them physically attractive, you swipe right. If you don't, you swipe left. If you both swipe right, you get to message them. It's horrible, obviously. It's a very horrible thing. Uh, I did join Tinder. I feel joining Tinder is um, something you do when you're lonely to the point of madness. I just sort of went insane from how lonely uh, I was. Um, but as well as the photos, you get um, a lot of people using quotes in, like, there's a little bio section. Most people leave it blank, blank but a lot of people use uh, the same quote from, um, from Marilyn Monroe, the philosopher Marilyn Monroe, who... Um, said, uh, if you can make a woman laugh, you can make her do anything. Which I don't think really works as a motto for an appearance-based sex app, does it? It's not, it's not pictures of my sense of humor on a night out or like graduates, it's just sort of my face, isn't it? It's not, it's not sensitive. And the people that have used that quote are trying to say they're better than everyone else that uses that service. They're like, oh, I know it's a meat market, but I'm actually on here, I'm actually on here because I really care about personality on this picture-based. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm really deep, guys. I'm here, for the per I'm here for the personality. I'm better than all of you, but pick me. Um, and it doesn't, uh, they've, they've tried to raise the sense of humor up with that, but actually they've put it, they've not gone like, if you can make a woman laugh, you've made her laugh, congratulations, you've made a connection with another human being, great stuff. Um, they've gone like, if you can make a woman laugh, you're one step closer to having sex with her, yeah, sexual, laughter as a sexual chess piece, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, not, it's not even true though, is it? Like, I don't know about you, but there are a number of, lo there are lots of times when I've made someone laugh and then not gone on to have sex with them. I would say almost 100% almost of times I've made people laugh, <laughs> I've not subsequently had sex with them. That's not happened. Um, like, there, you know, about 70 of you in here, it seems to be going, all right, maybe half of you enjoying it, maybe half of those people, women, I'm not expecting the, like a 19-person fuck pile to form <laughs> at the end of the gig out there. That's not the objective, it's just laughter, isn't it, guys? That's the aim. Um, uh, <laughs> good. I, uh, I should probably leave on that, really. <laughs> fuck pile. Bye-bye! <laughs>